How would you like to be the captain of a passenger spaceship capable of creating wormholes, dropping off passengers to their destinations? This is Hector Rakos from Piggy Board Gamer and today I will teach you how to play the game Wormholes designed by Peter McPherson. The game is for 1-5 to five players and plays in under an hour. Let's start! In the game, players control a passenger spaceship, delivering passengers to the various planets. On each turn, players can move their spaceship for up to 3 spaces. However, they are able to create wormholes in order to instantly travel between spaces. Players can use their own wormholes for free, but give their opponents an advantage whenever they use one of their wormholes. Exploring planets and delivering passengers will grant the players victory points. The player with the most victory points at the end of the game will win in wormholes. Start creating the board by placing the space station tile in the middle of the table using the correct side according to your player count. In my two players example, I will use this side facing upwards. Search the rest of the board tiles and remove tiles that are not applicable to your player count like this one in our case. After you shuffle the remaining board tiles, you place them one after the other next to the space station using this coin in every placement. The result will indicate the side of the next board tile as well as its alignment. After you rotate the tile accordingly, you place it to its dedicated space and you go on with the next tile. The only rule is that there must be at least two spaces between two planets. In that case, rotate the tile once more so that you reach a valid placement. These diagrams will help you create the board for a game with less than four players as well as a game with four or five players. Knowing that all hexes on the board with a black background are impassable, there must always be a route from the space station to every single planet on your board. There will be eight planets to a one to three players game and ten in a four or five players game. Feel free to rotate tiles in order to make all planets reachable from the space station. Then you need to create the exploration stack next to the board. Start by stacking the numerical exploration tokens in order with one on top. In a less than four players game, tokens 9 and 10 are removed from the game. Then you place the all planets connected token in the bottom of this stack. Finally stack the round tokens in order with three on top. Then place the previous stack on top of the second one. Place the point tokens in a reachable pile next to the board as well. Each player selects a color and then takes the corresponding ship, the pickup token and 10 wormhole tokens. Each player has 5 pairs of wormhole tokens. Players stack these tokens in numerical order using one on top. Each player also takes 3 energy tokens using the active side facing upwards. These here are passenger cards. The applicable part in these cards is the planet and also the point value. Scan the cards and remove the ones that are not applicable according to your player count. Shuffle the remaining card and create a face-down passenger deck next to the board. Next to this deck, leave a virtual area to become the space station docks. Then choose a random player to be the starting player who also takes that token. The first player takes one passenger card from the deck. The second and the third players gain two cards. And if there were a fourth or a fifth player, they would gain three cards from the passenger deck. Players keep their passenger cards secret from other players. The game is now ready to start. In the game, players take turns in a clockwise manner, starting with the player holding the first player token. On their first turn, players must select an empty hex around the space station and place the wormhole token which is on the top of their stack. Wormhole tokens are double-sided, they have an active and an inactive side. Place the token with the inactive side facing upwards. Then the player must place their spaceship on top of that wormhole token. Now the player can take their normal turn. A player has three energy tokens with which they can move their spaceship for up to three spaces. There are however some free actions that the player may perform at the start, between or at the end of their movements. By spending one energy token, the player can move to an adjacent available hex. So, for example, I could move my ship here. Hexes that have a dark background are impassable. A player cannot step on these hexes and must go around. 
A player can coexist with another player's ship or even step on another player's wormhole token. A player can still end their movement before spending all of their energy tokens. After the player finishes movement and performing free actions, it's the end of that player's turn and play proceeds with the next clockwise player. Now it's time to see these free actions. As a free action, a player can place one wormhole token. You take the next wormhole token from the top of your stack and place it either on the same hex with your ship or to an adjacent one. Wormhole tokens work in pairs. If the new token's pair is already on the board, then you flip both of the tokens to their active side. This means that the wormhole is now activated. This wormhole token is placed adjacent to this planet. There are many planets around the board. The rule is that the player can never have more than one wormhole token adjacent to the same planet or the space station. Last but not least, after wormhole tokens are placed, they cannot be moved or removed. Important! The first player that places a wormhole token around the planet gains the top exploration token from the top of the stack and keeps it in their play area. These are victory points that will be awarded at the end of the game. The next free action is to warp through a wormhole. If the player's ship is standing on top of an active wormhole, the player can move to its spare for free. This uses no energy token and the player can warp as many times as they wish during their turn. A player can also use wormholes of their opponents. So I could use an energy token to move my ship here and then for free I can use the red player's wormhole to move here. Each time you use an opponent's wormhole, however, the owner instantly gains a victory point from the supply. Of course, you can move over wormhole tokens without having to use them. The next reaction is to drop off passengers. If a player's ship is adjacent to a planet, then for free that player can use all of their cards in their hand depicting the same planet and place them in a personal face-down pile next to their play area. At the end of the game, each card in this pile will grant the player two victory points. The next free action is to pick up passengers and it's the only free action that can be performed only once in every turn. For this reason, after the player picks up passengers, they flip this token to the other side to indicate that they cannot perform this action again. So once in your turn, if your ship is adjacent to a planet or the space station, you can pick up passengers. When you pick up passengers, you start by discarding any number of cards from your hand. You can discard zero or even all of your cards. When players discard their cards, they do this in the space station docks area. Players discard their cards so that they create different piles for every single planet. After the player finishes discarding cards to the docks, if the player is picking up passengers from a planet, like in this case here, they start drawing passenger cards from the general supply until they have four. So since I have one card, I should draw another three. Now if the player draws cards depicting the planet where the player is currently picking passengers from, then these cards should be instantly discarded to the docks into that planet's draw pile. Of course, the player will continue drawing cards until they have four. But if the player is picking up passengers from the space station, then, instead of taking the cards from the face-down deck, they will take them from the docks. Again, the player can take cards until they have a hand of four cards, but the limitation here is that the player cannot take cards from more than two planets. I have only one card and one of my options is to take these three cards. As soon as the planet's connected token is revealed, it means that all planets have at least one wormhole adjacent to them. Players complete the current player round and from now on, every time the first player takes a turn, they discard the top token from the game. Now this means that the game will last another three rounds, then two, then one, and when the last token is removed, then the game is immediately over and we move to scoring. If, however, the passenger deck ever depletes, then players complete the current player round, they play one more round, and then the game is over and we move to scoring. In scoring, players add up the points they gained in tokens, their exploration tokens, and also two points per passenger card delivered. Also, players gain three victory points per each planet they have delivered above five. I have delivered to six different planets, so I will gain three points. 
If I had also delivered passengers to a seventh planet, I would gain six bonus points. The player with the highest score is the winner. In case of a tie, then the player who had delivered the most passengers wins the tie. If the tie still exists, then the player with the most point tokens wins the game. After that, all tied players share their victory. Now let's explain some special board locations. There is an orbit in the space station and also in the big ring planet. If a player's ship is standing on a hex with a dotted line, the ship is in orbit. What this means is that a player can spend one energy token and move their ship onto any other hex with a dotted line on the same circle. The big ring planet is the only planet where players can place any number of their wormholes around it. As we said previously, players can only place one wormhole around each planet except on this one. These hexes here are nebula hexes. Once a player steps on a nebula space, they can move again for free to any adjacent hex. So if I moved here, I can move again and again until I move out of the nebula. Don't forget that the player must pay energy to move on the nebula, but never pays when they get off. These are wild wormholes and they depict a number corresponding to a normal wormhole pair. If a player's ship is on such a hex, they may move for free to any wormhole that has the same number, provided it's their own wormholes and that they are active. So the green player could move here. Vice versa, a player can move from one of their wormholes to a wild wormhole depicting the same number. These here are photon cannons. If a player's ship is located on such a hex, then the player may move for free by traveling at any distance in a straight line and they may move through any obstacles. The player, however, must move at least two spaces away, so this here is a valid movement. A player could also move across gaps if the line continues after the gap, so I could move here as well. Finally, we have black holes. As soon as a player moves their ship onto that hex, the player flips the top card from the passenger deck and instantly moves their ship to a valid hex adjacent to that planet. The card is then discarded to the docks. Thanks for watching this video. If you like our videos and want to see more videos like that, please subscribe to our channel. Until next time, have fun and play more board games.